Who's the best existing artist that's been releasing a flurry of great albums that you've heard nothing about? I'm here to make sure you're aware because the mainstream music press will do anything to not tell you about these releases. Hi everyone, I'm Paul Crason and you're watching Music Mentions. I'm stepping into controversy once again. As I state in the description of my channel and in the first video I ever uploaded to this channel, I'm not afraid of discussing controversial topics. Today, I'm going to be talking about Ryan Adams. He's a 49-year-old, seven-time Grammy-nominated singer, songwriter, and musician with an almost 30-year career. For those of you not aware, in February of 2019, the New York Times published an article about accusations against Ryan Adams of emotional abuse, manipulation, and sexual misconduct by several women, including his ex-wife Mandy Moore and singer-songwriter Phoebe Bridgers. These allegations led to widespread condemnation by the mainstream music media and they forced cancellations of his tours and planned album releases. An FBI investigation into his allegations of an inappropriate communication with a minor was later dropped due to lack of evidence. By the way, the New York Times had several follow-up articles around the release of that original piece in February of 2019, but interestingly, they decided not to tell their readership about the dropping of the FBI investigation. Pretty interesting, huh? The mainstream music media's cancellation of Ryan Adams was extremely effective. If you didn't know any better, you might have thought he died or decided to quit making music altogether. The major music sites refused to give him any press regarding his music-related activities, his releases, or his tours. Just try to find any articles or reviews of his releases or tours subsequent to February of 2019. They don't exist, although he was incredibly active during this period. Now, I'm not here to be an apologist for Mr. Adams. What he was accused of was simply terrible. The guy was a jerk to these women and an asshole by all accounts. However, his career and livelihood were destroyed on just accusations. There were no trials, no convictions. His apologies fell on deaf ears. He even got sober and has remained sober, but that didn't move the needle either when it came to the music press. They're really determined to not just punish him, but to completely obliterate him and his ability to make a living as if he was a convicted rapist like R. Kelly or Harvey Weinstein or something. It seems that the press doesn't understand the idea of proportional punishment based on the severity of the crime, or in this case, severity of the accusations. I guess if Ryan Adams had released an album that made as much money as Thriller, they'd have given Ryan a pass like they've done with Michael Jackson an accused pedophile. So much for the idea that America loves redemption stories. Guess this doesn't apply when it comes to Ryan Adams for some reason. At least the music streaming providers haven't succumbed to the cancellation groupthink pressure and they still have his new music available for us to listen to. Regardless of what you may think of the artist, the art should be considered and evaluated fairly on its own merits here. Anyway, now that you have some background on this whole crazy situation, I'd like to tell you something that you won't see or read anywhere that's controlled by the emasculated mainstream music press. Ryan Adams has just released five new albums on New Year's Day of 2024. Here's a quick synopsis of each. 1985. This is essentially a punk rock album. It's got 29 songs, but the total album is a very short 34 and a half minutes long. It's fast, it's furious, and at times it, it can be a little weird. Heat Wave. 
This is another new rocking album, although it's in a more traditional rock vein than 1985. It's about 40 minutes long, has 14 songs. A real standout on this one is a song called Walls that is very Smith's influenced. Yes, the production could be better, but there's some good songs on this one. Sword and Stone. Here's another more traditional Ryan Adams rocker, but with many mid-tempo tunes as well. Maybe a little closer to his great Grammy-nominated self-titled album from back in 2014. Highlight here is a song called Manhattan in the Rain. A bit of a slower tune, but man, what a great song. Star Sign, a quieter release than the previous three albums. More contemplative with Ryan's voice, more front and and very clear. If you want to start exploring all these new albums, I'd start with this one. I think it's the strongest of the five, and I actually think it stands along some of the best albums of his career. Prisoners. This is a full live version of the fantastic 2017 Prisoner album. I'm not sure where or when this recording uh, happened, but the recording itself is fantastic. The instrumentation is spare. Ryan's voice is stunning on this one. These albums are all well worth listening to and checking out, but I'd start with Star Sign, followed by probably Sword and Stone, and then Prisoners, Heat Wave, 1985, in that order. Now, I'd like to quickly catch you up on what Ryan's released since his cancellation, starting back in 2020. So in 2020, during the pandemic lockdown year, he released an album called Wednesdays, a true highlight of his cancellation period. It's simply beautiful. Should have been on all of the end of year best of lists. In 2021, he released Big Colors. Now this was the album that was scheduled for release in April of 2019, but was delayed because of the cancellation. This, however, was another solid, wonderful release. In 2022, he released an album called Chris. This was recorded for his brother who had recently passed away. It's a really good listen, and it can be a moving experience as well. He also released Romeo and Juliet, a big double album filled with wonderful songs. Are you seeing a trend here yet? Then there was the album FM. This is a bit of a rocker, but nonetheless, it's a solid rocker. It has a bit of a 70s vibe to it, I think. And then another album called Devolver. Like FM, it's more on the rockier side of things, but continues his string of solid cancellation period releases. In 2023, last year, we got Return to Carnegie Hall, a simply brilliant and sprawling live album from his 2022 acoustic tour. It was produced by the celebrated and legendary Don Was. It's Ryan on acoustic guitar and occasionally piano. This one made it on my year-end Best Albums of 2023 video I recently did. It's that good. There were also three releases of covers of full albums in 2023. We got Nebraska by Bruce Springsteen, Blood on the Tracks by Bob Dylan, and Morning Glory by Oasis. I'd say that the Dylan cover is the best of these three, but the quality of the productions is a little less than great. I think they were just all drenched in a little bit of too much reverb, but check those out. If you've been counting, Ryan Adams has released 15 albums in a little over four years. Technically, there were 16, but a live album with the Cardinals called A Live Volume 1 was never released to streaming, but you can find it on YouTube. It's a great one for all you jam heads out there. I don't even think that the super productive King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard can touch this rate of prolific output. But this isn't just about cranking out songs just to keep Ryan busy. Most of what he's released here has been at a good to great to an even sublime level of quality. That's what I'd really like to emphasize in this video. It's an 
absolute shame that more people have not been made aware of these quality under the radar releases. There's so much wonderful new music here to listen to. I sincerely hope all of you dive in, discover what those of us that believe in proportionate uh, punishment and redemption know that this new music is the best kept secret in all of music right now. I hope that Ryan Adams continues to remain sober, surrounds himself with the right people, and releases more great music in the future. I also hope that the spineless mainstream music media will eventually have enough guts to reevaluate their sentence of professional death they've given him and wake up to the realization that he's more than earned another chance to earn an, a, a living through his art. Anyway, thanks guys for watching today. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos and watching my channels. If you would, please give me a like, hit the subscribe and the notifications. I'm going to see you guys next time.